I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code 551. The time is 6 p.m. All right. Let's go item one, invocation and prayer. Mr. Husbands. If you care to, please join me in prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you for your love and your mercy. Father, we uh, thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon our community and our school district and each individual represented here. Father, we ask a special blessing tonight that you would wrap your protective cloak around each and every member of our school district. That's every teacher, every administrator, and every child and every parent of every child and protect them from whatever this is that we're dealing with. We know you're in charge, we're not, and we're thankful for that. We ask that you continue to bless this district, especially at a time when we can't effectively do our mission the same way and with all the changes. And we know that you're in charge and that everything is gonna be just fine if we look to you and seek your wisdom and your will in all that we decide. And with that, Father, we just ask your continued blessings upon us. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. <clears throat> pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the Texas Pledge. <clears throat> I honor the Texas, Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Husband. Um, item one, C, citizen participation. Ms. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? No, they have not. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, if it's all the same for you gentlemen, I'd like to move item nine on the agenda up. So we'll go dive right into item nine, if you will, human resources. Name him of principal, Armstrong Elementary, Dr. No. All right, well, thank you all very much. Um, we do appreciate everyone being here today. I'll just make a note that um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about our um, current status in the school district a little later, but um, if you would note, we, we've tried to spread out here today. Uh, in, in addition, uh, in this room, uh, we do have an overflow room down the hallway, where, so we are trying to spread out, and we have a lot of families in here tonight, so we may look like we're a little uh, in closer quarters than, than we would like to be, but it's because we have a lot of families, and we're so thankful that you are here tonight to celebrate with your loved ones. So um, we will be naming, um, making some recommendations to you tonight, and I'm proud to say that uh, each of the folks that we will be recommending for you for hire are current CISD employees that will be um, having an opportunity to take on new roles and, and so we're thankful for their growth in the district. As we start with Armstrong Elementary, uh, Armstrong has historically been one of our highest performing elementaries. Um, they serve uh, a community that needs a strong school uh, as the center of their community and Armstrong has provided that. Um, as we've moved, the principal, Ms. Uh, Trisha Thacker, will be moving from Armstrong to Creighton. Um, that created a, a large void at Armstrong and we sought out a person that would bring strength, uh, would be able to continue the great work that's been going on at that campus, um, understood the community, and um, we have that in Teresa Waller, who is currently an assistant principal at Sam Houston Elementary. We, we've all seen and chronicled the growth at Sam Houston over the last few years, and that would not have happened uh, without the leadership of Ms. Waller uh, being a part of that team. So at this time, it is my honor to recommend Ms. Teresa Waller to be the next principal of Armstrong Elementary. So moved. Second. Hey, gentlemen, we have a first, we have a second. Any discussion? Here and none. All in favor? Motion passes. Congratulations. President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Noll, I'd like to thank you first for your leadership. 
and this opportunity to lead Armstrong Elementary. I have with me tonight my mom, Joyce Stolliver, and my husband, Randy. I've been blessed throughout my life to be surrounded by a loving and supportive family, not only at home, but also within CISD. I've also been blessed to have many mentors throughout our district uh, as a student and as an educator, and many of those mentors are in this room today. I believe that Conroe ISD is the best place to serve, and I couldn't think of being anywhere else. I will be honored to serve the community of Armstrong Elementary, and I thank you for everything that you do for our school. Congratulations once again. All right, item B, name of the principal, Rice Elementary, Dr. No. We talked about this, but with, the, with our um, social distancing, it feels very un-Texan to not get the opportunity yeah. to shake hands, and, I, and we apologize. Know that we are shaking your hand. We are so happy. <laughs> like, do we do air high five? Yeah, we could, yeah maybe something. <laughs> we do something. Um, at Rice Elementary is, is one of, um, really one of our more historical elementaries in the Conroe feeder. Um, it, just, it has a long tradition of great leadership um, dating back years and years and years. Um, once again, we, we had a principal transfer. We had a very successful principal at Rice Elementary that is going to be moving over to Wilkinson Elementary to um, take the reins there, which left the void at Rice. Um, one of our focuses as we hire administrators and specifically assistant principals as we look to hire assistant principals that can one day be principals for us in Conroe ISD. Um, another objective of ours is to um, go out and seek great talent from other school districts when we have an opportunity to bring in great talent and add them to our system. Um, we did both of those things when we hired Melissa Skiba as an assistant principal at B.B. Rice two years ago. She was a successful assistant principal in Clear Creek. Um, I know that they hoped that one day they would be naming her a principal in their school district, um, but I am proud today to make a recommendation that we name Melissa Skiba the principal of B.B. Rice and Conroe ISD. Mr. President, I move the board approve the recommendation of Melissa Skiba as, pr as principal of B.B. Rice Elementary. Go Raccoons. Yeah. I second the motion. All right, we've got our first, second discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Motion passes. Yeah. President Williams, members of the Board of Trustees, and Dr. Knoll. I feel so honored and blessed for this opportunity to serve B.B. Rice Elementary and Conroe ISD. I would like to thank my husband, Sean, for being my partner and supporting my every endeavor. You are the rock of the family and can't imagine taking this journey without you. Thank you to my boys, Ryder and Tyler, for being the positive light that continues to shine every day. You make me so proud. To my parents, Bill and Trisha Chancy, being born into a family of educators was incredible, but having you as my parents was the true jackpot. Thanks for your love and encouragement. Thank you to Melinda Stewart for being such a wonderful mentor and friend. Your heart and legacy will continue to radiate at Rice. To the staff, students, and families at Rice Elementary, my love for you guys is unmeasurable, and I won't let you down. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Okay. Congratulations on once again. Item C, name Director of School Improvement and Leadership Transformation, Dr. Noll. Thank you. As you will recall, uh, last month's board meeting, we named our Executive Director of School Improvement. That was Dr. Tamika Taylor. I think Dr. Taylor is here. Um, and then uh, we made an addition to her team last month as well um, with Mr. Hartwell Brown joining her. Um, tonight, we will round out our school improvement team um, by once again naming one of our most successful principals to join that team. Um, Mr. Jeff Fuller has a long legacy as a school leader in Connor ISD, been a successful elementary principal and a successful principal on the junior high level at multiple campuses. Um, when you talk about our most decorated campuses, Irons Junior High is always one that is mentioned. Um, and the, the greatest compliment that I give Mr. Fuller, I just talk to him all the time, is anytime you walk into Irons Junior High, the first thing you, you can you feel and see is this is just a very well-run school from 
every aspect from the academics, the student discipline, the organization. Um, we know that the, the experience that he has on the junior high level and the elementary level will serve uh, the rest of our principals well as he works with them to help them improve their schools. And so tonight, I'm proud to make that recommendation of Jeff Fuller. So move it. Right, second. Okay, Sorry. motion Mr. Husband, second Mr. Sanders. Gentlemen, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Motion passes. Okay. President Williams, school board, Dr. Knoll, thank you. Uh, it's hard not to touch the podium up here when I'm trying to be uh, socially responsible. Um, I want to say thank you. I brought my wife with me and my youngest of uh, five kids over there. Um, so start the, start the journey over again. Uh, I've got one that's uh, I come from a family of educators, 14, about to be 15, uh, that's graduating in May, May, went in as a pre-med, came out as a teacher, so she's going to need a job here in a couple of, <laughs> a couple of months. I um, need a good reference. <laughs> I, I, I'm excited. Obviously, you know, I, I've been looking at this position before it was even a position, um, and it, it's right up my alley. Uh, I'm excited um, to work with Dr. Taylor Hartwell, um, but I want to say you know, to my wife, thank you for being my support system and my cheerleader when I was, was down and out. You know, we have those moments every once in a while. Um, and the interview committee, Dr. Taylor, Dr. Noll, and the school board for having the faith in me to, to take on such a responsible task that this is a huge position that uh, working with, with principals and, and serving them and serving the district even further. You know, they say that you, you have fun at what you do. You never work a day in your life. I've been at this 25 years, and it seems like yesterday that I just started and, and I was going to retire in maybe three or four years. But my retirement plan is another 18 or so. <laughs> so Y'all got me for a while. So thank you again. I All appreciate right. this opportunity. Well, there you go. Man. He, he even had a coordinating diaper bag I when he walked in. Yeah, he had, he had the whole, oh, yeah. He had the, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Her or you? Yeah, man. All right, name him of... Name of director, name director of human resources, Dr. No. All right. Well, this is um, a position that is becoming available because Dr. Kathy Sharples is retiring this year after uh, over 40 years of service to the school district, um, and she will be dearly missed. But um, this is a hire tonight that was um, really the vision started for this years and years ago as uh, Ms. Paula Green was brought to um, the Conroe ISD central office from her principalship at Ford Elementary, um, everyone could see at that point that she had the potential to lead the great human Res resources department. She's been well mentored by Dr. Sharples. Um, she's been involved in every aspect of what we do in our human res resources department for years and years, has proven herself to be a great leader. I have no doubt that she is ready to lead that department and will do so um, magnific magnific magnificently yeah. Is he, I knew these new braces were going to get me at some point. Um, she will do wonderful, and I'm very proud of her and proud to recommend Paula Green. So move approval. I second the motion. Motion second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Outstanding. Congratulations. President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Null. I stand before you tonight to say thank you for trusting me to serve as the next Director of Human Resources. My career in education began 28 years ago. From day one, I have been committed to doing the work that ensures that the very best thing happens for students. This has always been important to me because I truly know that I am the person and the educator that I am because of the investments made in me by others. My grandmother, church members from my hometown, hometown in Arkansas, and many friends and educators that I have worked with along the way. There's an African proverb that says that it takes a village to raise a child, and it has framed my professional career because it truly took a village to get me to where I am today. I firmly believe that doing what is right for kids is not an option. 
but a commitment to which we must all stand rooted in. I am grateful for my experiences as a Conroe ISD educator. I came here 14 years ago from um, Irving ISD as an administrator, and I was really prepared to go back to the classroom because I didn't think that I would be able to get a job as an administrator right off the bat. But lo and behold, I met J.J. Dahl, who welcomed me as a part of the Hauser Elementary family, a group of students and teachers that I will always cherish. She taught me a lot about leadership here in this district, but most of all, she taught me not to sweat the small stuff. There are so many people who have impacted uh, my growth as an administrator in this district. I am thankful for their leadership, their mentorship, their faith in me, sometimes from afar and other times hand in hand. Many thanks to Dr. Don Stockton, Dr. Kathy Gibson, Dr. Chris Hines, Carrie Galatis, and Dr. Jean Stewart. Through them, I have learned many things and have come across important words to live by. For example, all does mean all, and to always be ready for unintention, unintentional consequences. Thank you, Dr. Hines, for that one, because I think that we all find ourselves um, believing that a lot right now. So um, I've had the privilege of working in human resources for the last eight years and have learned from the best mentor ever, Dr. Kathy Sharples. It is her guidance and modeling of how to handle the toughest situations that allow me to stand before you tonight. I look forward to continuing the legacy that she has built within our district and across this state. Dr. Knoll, as our district continues to grow and to change, thank you for trusting me to lead our human resources department. We are blessed to have a group of individuals who work each day to ensure that the needs of this district are met and we couldn't be successful without them. Here tonight, small in number, I do have some very special people here with me. I want to thank my husband, Terry Green, who um, is my anchor and my support. Um, he calls himself Iron Man, and that is truly what he is. He makes great things happen for our family, and I could never, ever thank him enough. Um, our two children are products of this district. Our daughter, Terrica Green, she's here with us tonight. She graduated from Oak Ridge in 2014 graduated from Texas A&M 2018, All right. and she is a successful electrical engineer today. So I thank this district for all that you do. And then our last son, he's um, Dexter Green. He's also at Oak Ridge High School, um, really showing himself to figure out academics and a leader in athletics. So we're just proud of both of them, and we thank you for all that you invest in our whole family. I thank you for this great opportunity. I am committed to leading with a servant heart and continuing to help this district meet its goals for attracting and retaining the best personnel to serve the students for which we serve each day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations again, Ms. Green, outstanding. Um, name Executive Director of Operations, Dr. Noll. Well, once again, um, I'll tell you, I just got to tell you, I, I couldn't be more proud tonight. When you see all these people coming up, great people, and there are there all our people, and um, just so proud. And and that continues with our executive director of operations. As we know, Mr. Caker is going to retire this year, and that created an opportunity for someone to come in and lead our operations department. Uh, as we begin to think of potential candidates, you you want to think of someone that is uh, a critical thinker. Uh, thinks ahead, um, can, uh, can, can almost see those unintended consequences before they happen, uh, but, and is also a great communicator and can relate with all people. And um, we had the perfect candidate in the school district as Mr. Chris McCord at McCullough Junior High. Uh, he has served many years as the principal of McCullough and um, he is known for being a great leader. He's well loved by the campus staff, by the community, in, as a whole, um, I can't imagine what we're going to do to the Woodlands Facebook tonight when this gets out. Um, <laughs> but uh, he is a, a gifted communicator and planner, and uh, in addition to being just an outstanding man. And those are characteristics that are going to help him lead all of the departments that report um, to, the, to the operations director and Connor ISD. And so tonight I would like to 
uh, recommend Mr. Chris McCord. So moved. Second. Motion second. Discussion? Who's going to look after my two boys? I got two boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little problematic for yeah. me. Um, no, seriously. <laughs> All right, we got a motion That's second. That's why he took the job. That's helping me in his decision process. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, I'd like to start this evening by thanking my wife, Angie, who's here today. She is a two-decade uh, staff member for Conroe ISD, and I appreciate her. She's in the royal blue dress. So thank you, Angie. She is the love of my life. All right. She supports me every day, and I appreciate her greatly. Thank you, Angie. It's my honor to stand in front of you today as a 22-year-old, 22-year-old, 22-year-old. <laughs> 22-year uh, staff member for Conroe ISD. I've had the opportunity to be a uh, principal at Branch Crossing Junior High and McCullough Junior High, and I've truly been blessed, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to serve. You know, over that time, I've developed positive relationships with many of the members of the operations team that help make our district what it is. And I'm looking forward to continuing to develop those connections to improve our district in any way possible. So I appreciate them and looking forward to that. Ironically, many years ago, my father occupied this exact same role in another school district. Mm -hmm. And my memories of that was being out with my father in the middle of the night, seeing if we were iced out or snowed out, <laughs> finding out, but I didn't have Instagram or Snapchat or Twitter. I couldn't really tell anybody, but I do remember that. And I'm not thinking it'll snow that much here, but that's one memory of that with my father. Uh, I pledge to you to help continue building a culture that is finding ways to improve, using common sense, and finding ways to say yes to our staff, our, our operations team, and just making children our top priority. I thank you for your continued support, and I appreciate everything you do for our district. It is appreciated greatly. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Adam F., name Assistant Superintendent of Middle Schools. Dr. No. Well, thank you. Uh, this is a new position for us in Conroe ISD as we've continued to grow. Um, as you know, we, we operate with a very thin uh, administrative staff here as um, proven through our data as compared to our like school districts. And so we have really run this very large school district with a small number of assistant superintendents compared to other districts. Um, as we prioritize what the needs were in the school district, we realized that um, we wanted to better support our students as they transition from grade six to grade seven. Uh, that's an area academically where we feel like we could make improvement. Well, you, to support students, you must support the schools that serve those students. Uh, and that's what drove us to this idea of having an assistant superintendent to serve those middle schools. So the intermediates and junior highs. Uh, as you um, look to who can be that person, you, you want someone that understands that transition well, understands the curriculum well, but can also be a leader of both intermediate and junior high principals, can find ways to make connections with them um, and serve them well. We have that in Dr. Shelley Winkler. Uh, she has served as our elementary director um, for the last few years, and she has proven herself to be someone that uh, the principals respect. They seek her advice. Um, we know um, through the work that she has done that when she takes on a project, it is not only done, but it is done well and, and typically perfectly, truthfully. Um, she, she's amazing in her dedication and, uh, and her thoughtfulness. Uh, goes a long ways as well. I have no doubt that our intermediate and junior high principals will respond very well to her leadership and that she will work well with Mr. Colson and Dr. Phillips to make sure that we have uh, great transitions throughout. So I would like to recommend for you tonight to be our new assistant superintendent for middle schools, Dr. Shelley Winkler. So moved. Second. General motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion passes. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, President Williams, uh, uh, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. Thank you for the recommendation and vote of confidence to serve as Assistant Superintendent for Middle Schools. 
When I was 18 years old, I accepted a position at the HEB Foundation camp outside of Kerrville as a camp counselor. In the months leading up to the summer, I prayed that out of all the age groups, I would not be assigned to the middle school kids. <laughs> but of course, that was exactly the group that I was given, not only that summer, but the following two summers as well. Being around 10 and 13 year olds 24 seven was quite eye opening. Yeah. I found they were awkward, stuck in the middle of childhood and young adulthood. They were funny, they were ready to find out who they were and where they fit into the world. They were absolutely amazing. In the years to follow professionally, I almost exclusively worked with 10 and 12 year olds because of that unanswered prayer over 25 years ago. So today on St. Patrick's Day, I count myself lucky, fortunate and blessed. Not only for those middle school campers being put in my path, which ultimately set the course for my professional career, but also for the mentors in my life that have invested and continue to invest in me, Ken and Kathy Sharples. While their approaches are definitely very different, both push me to challenge myself and push past my comfort zones. Dr. Kathy Gibson, who has always said and delivered on being my biggest cheerleader, though admittedly there were times I couldn't see it. Dr. Chris Hines, who reminds us daily with his words and actions that children are precious and worthy. Dr. Curtis Knoll, who understands the power of positive relationships in our complex world and reminds us to hold one another accountable, not for test scores or for accolades, but to hold one another accountable to be our best for the children and the community that we serve. I also count myself lucky to have a close knit group of friends that keep me grounded and a family that loves me unconditionally. My family has taught me to work hard, serve others, and most importantly, learn to laugh at yourself because if you don't, someone else in the family will. <laughs> Tonight, I have my parents with me, John and Cheryl Fox. They're back there <laughs> doing this. My sister, Shannon. My brother in law, Brett, in the hall. <laughs> my niece, Morgan. And my sister, Stephanie. I'm also um, blessed to have an amazing husband, my touchstone, Mike, who has put up, with, put up with me for 22 years of marriage, countless social functions, and three college degrees without much complaint, <laughs> or at least that I know of. Yeah. Uh, my twin girls, Ryan and Riley, who were 2019 graduates of College Park High School. Ryan is finishing her first year at St. Houston, and like Macaulay Fuller, will be knocking on Dr. Knoll's door in about three years for a job. My daughter Riley is finishing her first year at Baylor as a nursing student and has heard from me more than once about the benefits of being a school nurse. My son, Brayden, is our reminder that life always has little surprises in store, <laughs> is a fourth grader at Powell. Thank you again for this opportunity to serve our middle schools in Conroe ISD. I'm committed to the long legacy our middle schools have established by providing strong academic and social and emotional learning for all of our students. I look forward to serving with our outstanding leaders, Mr. Colson and Dr. Phillips, and especially our intermediate and junior high school campus leaders. So call it luck, good fortune, or fate. I count myself blessed for this opportunity to serve our district. Thank you. Awesome. Congratulations, everyone. Outstanding, outstanding selection, and uh, look forward to many great things, many more great things, continued success in CISD. Okay. With that, I want to give everybody an opportunity to kind of break for the houses and the, all the family and all the support folks came out to. Take a five-minute recess, maybe, just to let that happen. Okay, we'll That'll take okay. five. Let's do yeah, five. It's a five-minute recess. That way we can get right. them out. Let's do five. Thank you. All right, let's continue on. Dr. Noll, ready? Yes, sir. All right, item two, administration A, consider adoption of emergency resolution relating to what it was. What's that? Co COVID-19. Yes, sir. Oh, how you pronounce it? Yeah. COVID-19. COVID-19. We're not allowed to call it Corona anymore? No. Okay. That's the fancy version right. of ahead, Corona. Man. Yes, sir. Um, what I'd like to do just briefly is, is just give a brief little update, and then, then I'll turn it over to Ms. Galatis for, um, for the item. Um, as you know, we did have to make a decision last night and, and an announcement to uh, close our schools through April 10th. That was a decision that was made not in isolation by any means. Um, I do sit as a board member for the Montgomery County Public Health Department. Um, so I've been in constant conversation with Montgomery County Public Health as well as our county judge and commissioners. Uh, and in addition to that, state 
and national leaders that we have conversations with. Uh, and you know, it was determined yesterday that um, in order to stop the spread of this virus in our community, public schools <clears throat> needed to close for an extended period of time. So we um, followed suit along with all the other Houston area school districts and we made that decision. Um, as we talked about and we shared last night in Facebook, uh, we did a Facebook Live post um, to share that information. Um, we do expect that our children will continue to learn through this closure. This is not uh, an extended spring break, and we chose very carefully uh, those words to not have those be our words. This is not an extended vacation. Um, this is simply a new normal and a new way that we will be teaching our students. So this week our buildings are closed completely, but next week we will transition into uh, a new way of teaching and learning in Conroe ISD, where we'll have uh, some staff members may be present in the buildings at certain parts of the day. Um, but we will expect that we will be teaching children and children will be learning. So along those lines, part of the request that we will make to you tonight is that um, we would pay our employees through this closure because we do have expectations that they will be working and they will be serving children as they do every they do every day throughout the school year. It will just look differently um, over these next few weeks. Um, I'd also just like to update you that today was our first meal distribution. So we had 10 sites today. We gave out over 20,000 meals today to students. And uh, we will do this again on Thursday. Um, we will actually anticipate giving out many more on Thursday because we'll be um, serving them for Thursday, Friday, and Monday as, as we'll be next Tuesday before we distribute again. So uh, we had great turnout. Um, one of the more touching things that has occurred through this, as always is the case, is um, in tough times you, you, you can see the worst in some people, but we choose to see the what we see is the best in a whole lot of people. And We've had more volunteers that have wanted to come and be a part of that food distribution than we can handle, truthfully. Um, and, and that's a beautiful thing. Uh, the, our community wants to serve others and make it about other people. So um, I know that we'll have volunteers to make these food distributions work over the next few weeks, and, and that'll be uh, a primary focus for us. And then the other primary focus for us will be instructing our students um, either online or through any other means that we need to. We know all of our students don't have internet access, but our pledge to our families is that uh, everyone is going to have an equal opportunity to an education. So if we need to serve them not online but through other mechanisms, we will do that to make sure that we don't have an opportunity gap based on internet access over these next few months. So that's where we are. Um, we will be doing another Facebook Live on Thursday night. So we'll give an update to the community on Thursday night. Uh, in addition to just the general update, we'll, I will be joined on that, that broadcast by Denise Sapola, our coordinator of guidance and counseling. We want to share with families how to deal with the stress and anxiety that this change of schedule, all, all the things we hear on the news, how do we talk to our children about that, but also how do we as adults cope with that? So she'll be on uh, with me to share that information and I'll give just a general update as well. So um, hopefully that would answer any questions you have. Other than that, the our video is posted um, online from last night's Facebook Live. I believe at last count it had about 78,000 views. So I think people are getting that information that way, which is positive. We, we've learned that that's a way um, our community can access information from us. We'll utilize that more often moving forward. So outstanding job, by the way. That was a nice, well done. Thank you. If, any questions for me regarding the, the response at all? And if what not, time is the Facebook live tomorrow night? It'll be 6 p.m. Thursday, 6 uh, Thursday night. Next Thursday night. Okay. Yes, and we'll, um, tomorrow, uh, Ms. Blakelock will begin to put those notices out on our social media and, and uh, to let everyone know when it will, when it will occur. Ms. Okay. Uh, I will go ahead now and turn it over to Ms. Gladys. This item is a resolution to allow the district to operate during this emergency period in hopefully a more efficient manner in the event that we aren't able to have uh, future board meetings. Um, it's, the, it's a broad resolution and districts across the state are, are adopting similar ones. This one allows Dr. Knoll to um, implement board policy DEA and near board policy DEA. It has a provision that allows for payment during emergency closure times. 
um, when there is a need articulated. And so with this, this resolution gives Dr. Null the ability to determine, you know, premium pay, uh, when that would be necessary, if that would be necessary, and under the circumstances it would be. It also allows him to alter the school calendar without coming back to you in the event that we have to do that. It gives him authority to set, um, alter our policies and procedures relating to absences and leaves related to COVID-19, if that becomes necessary. If we have to seek waivers from TEA related to school closures or other issues related to the virus, he would have the authority to do that without coming um, to the board for approval. And then uh, also to declare uh, an emergency for the purposes of calculating time uh, for the responses to the um, Open Records Act, the Texas Published Information Act. The governor has also suspended certain provisions of Open Meetings Act in the future if we do need to meet that will allow us to do some video conferencing. It's still a little challenging. Um, it's not, you know, as easy as one might hope. So I don't know what, you know, how our meeting schedule will go in the future. But this will give us the ability. Oh, it also allows us to buy things um, and seek your approval at the next board meeting after they've already been purchased. He'll let you know purchases that have been made to deal with um, the COVID-19 situation. So that, those are the, the powers that you'd be delegating to him. The resolution would last through the, um, till the emergency is no longer in existence or till school resumes, and that would be what we're asking you to give him the ability to do tonight. Gentlemen? Move approval. approval of the resolution is presented. Oh, I second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion, gentlemen? I have some questions. Yeah. Doctor, I'm sorry, Ms. Sanders. Yeah, I'm, I don't think you have. <laughs> I, I have not attained that level yet. Thank Go you. Ahead. <laughs> so with the approvals, I understand, what about follow-up reporting back to the board regarding anything done under the resolution? What does the resolution state about coming back to the board? Resolution providing accountability for that. Well, it, it specifically addresses purchases, purchasing guidelines. Okay. Um, it doesn't articulate anything specific about the other ones. I'm sure Dr. Noel will be. I'm happy thinking to about specific. policies. I mean, if you're if you're making policy changes and things like that, as a board member, any of us may be asked by mm -hmm. constituents, and I just want to have some provision that would allow us in there. And I don't know if I need to make a motion to amend the resolution or not, but something that would allow provisions where you make those decisions. I, I, I have all the faith in you to do that. I just want to be made aware of it in some way, some formally let, let the board know what's going on so that we can be in sync with you regarding those decisions that you're making. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to offer you that assurance that, yeah. that we would communicate that with you. If you, if you wanted That's it in right. resolution, that'd be one question I could tell you here publicly tonight, absolutely. Any of those decisions, as we've tried to do over the last week, would be communicated with you. Okay. you know, as do you, do you feel possible. that that needs to be in the motion? No, I'm just asking. I, yeah. I mean, no, I, I trust Doctor Noel. For you to he says he's going to do it. I trust I that this, he will. I had the same concern, and I'm I'm comfortable with with public statement that it sure. will be done. I'm, mm -hmm. Absolutely, okay. I don't okay. see a need to amend. Yeah. All right. Same question? here. I'm comfortable. Yeah. Questions that I have is um, just on. Because one of the one of the comments that was made uh, on Facebook Live was mm -hmm. that you were going to come to the board and ask to make sure that the, that that pay continues to move on, and I, that's what this is about as well. So my question is, if could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Because uh, some people will say teacher pay; they interpret that as the title of teacher pay. Um, are we talking about being able to continue uh, pay for contract, non-contract, for cafeteria, for? Who, bus drivers, you know, bus drivers this, paraprofessionals, all, everybody who makes who makes an, 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 an employee. A, a, yeah, anybody. Yes. Could you expand a little bit on that? Yeah, I'll be happy to do that. So, um, what we're asking is to pay those those employees that that work for us on a daily basis. So that would include teachers, paraprofessionals, bus drivers, nurses, all employees. Now, um, we do get into um, special circumstances that we have to to look at. You know, a, a, a substitute teacher, for example, that has accepted a long-term sub position throughout this closure, um, they, they will be working to educate children. So they would be included to be paid. Now, we may have substitute teachers that had accepted a job here or there during this time. But that would not be included. Sure. Um, we do have some employees that are um, not considered full-time because they are uh, 49 percent they might be a retiree and they work for us uh, half time we would uh, recommend paying those um, employees because they work 
for us on a regular basis. So that that is who we're looking at. But there is no distinction based on job title with this. This is all employees of the district that we are making this request for. Okay. That's good. And on that on that same note, are we anticipating any any disruption in state revenue coming in? Are we going to be pulling this from uh, from rainy day fund from general yes, thank account? Where would that come? From? That's a great it's a great point. Um, TEA has uh, told us that they will continue our funding uh, that we are uh, we currently receive at the level that we currently receive. The expectation that TEA has put upon us for that is that we make an effort to educate our children while they are not in the building. So um, if that question was to arise from, from a staff member, why am I being asked during this closure to try to educate children? That is the expectation of TEA and it is tied to our continued funding. So that, that would be tied to this request to pay us in, uh, in its simplest terms, uh, as I shared with the group today is, um, we will continue to need to earn the salaries that we are that we are given um, through you and, and from TEA. And so um, I do not believe that this will be a financial hardship for us um, because of the debt, what they have promised us through TEA. So we, we will be able to have waivers for the days that are missed and they will fund us at our um, average ADA that we've had throughout the year uh, for these days. Do they have, have they given any guidelines on how they will monitor that tr that education. It could be audited and, and um, that could happen, but I have to sign personally an attestation that we are doing as I, as I promised we are doing and we are trying to educate children while they are not there. So it really, that obligation falls on me personally. Okay. When I sign that form, I'm promising the state that we are doing that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other further discussion? All right. Motion second. All in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Clyde. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, item three, consent agenda. I have received no request to remove anything. Uh, gentlemen, did you have any requests to remove anything? I move, I move the adoption as, as posted. Second the motion. A motion second. All in favor? Well, discussion. Okay, all in favor? All right, motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Item uh, four, curriculum and instruction. Consider adoption of instructional material for English language arts. Uh, Dr. Null, please. All right. Dr. Hines, um, if you'd like to just make a quick presentation on this item. I think we've submitted the, the, all the information. Dr. Upshaw, thank you. I apologize. Mr. Williams, members of the board, Dr. Knoll. So tonight we had come earlier in the semester and had a conversation with you in October where we were going through the process of our adoption materials for our secondary language arts. And today we come to you with our recommendation as a board. We've come together with our district committee and we have decided to purchase um, materials from the listed vendors that are listed here to be able to supplement our English language arts also our, um, our seventh and eighth grade English language learners material and also our ninth and tenth grade ELL learners material and our electives for English language arts. So with your permission, we'd like to move forward. All right, I have a motion, gentlemen. So moved. All right, any discussion? All in favor? Second. Second. Oh, who's second? Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore. Second, any discussion? All right, all in favor. Motion passes. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Dr. I really Paul. appreciate that. Um, all right, item five, administration. Consider and approve the selection of construction manager at risk for Creighton Elementary. Dr. Uh, no, please. Okay. Mr. Foster, Foster will come forward with these next items. President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Null, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval the selection of a construction manager at risk for our Creighton Elementary overall project, and then uh, authorize Dr. Null to execute the contracts. If you recall from our November bond referendum, the overhaul of Creighton Elementary was one of our main projects in that in that bond referendum. Uh, the IBI group helped us by preparing an RFQ. We had four uh, contractors respond to that RFQ. We invited all four to participate in step two of our two-step selection process, and we've determined Ellisor constructors to be the offerer submits the proposal determined to be the best value for the district. Like our other selection processes, we've made the, the ranking evaluation of all the uh, submittals as part of the item. At this time, we're requesting your approval of Ellisor constructors. So moved. Second. 
Motion second discussion. All in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Foster. Mr. Foster. Uh, item B, consider approval of selection of construction manager at risk for Oak Ridge High School overall. Okay. At this time, I'm happy to bring forward for your consideration and approval the uh, selection of construction manager at risk for our Oak Ridge High School mm -hmm. overall project, which also includes our South County CTE Center project. Mm -hmm. These two were also born in our uh, November bond referendum, which passed uh, this past November. And again, our architect for this project, IBI Group, helped us by preparing a RFQ. Uh, our purchasing department published that for us, and we had six contractors respond to the RFQ. State law requires that we uh, limit our in invitations to the second step to no more than five. Uh, so we had to cut part, uh, cut the contractor out of uh, the process. Uh, so we did invite uh, five companies to participate in the second step of our two-step selection process. After evaluating uh, all of the proposals, uh, we have determined Duratech Inc. to be the offerer who submits the proposal determined to be the best value for the district. And like the one before, the ranking evaluation is attached to this item as well. At this time, we're asking for your approval of the selection of Duratech Incorporated. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? I have a question. We have Mr. Sanders. Uh, footprint of the South County CTE Center, how big are we talking about and where is it going to be located? in reference to to the high school that's a great question. that is a very good question <laughs> um so and there's lots of moving parts for it right now know, so that's we've had some uh, so we've had some uh meetings with the city uh, i'm working on meetings with the county uh, okay. because some of the uh, ideas that they have uh, might change radically what our footprint might be in the future okay. uh, but if nothing changed from today it would generally be speaking generally be planned to be on the tennis court side of the senior high campus okay uh, but that uh, and, and that could change. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we do plan to come to you with some information to actually discuss the many options that are out there okay. uh, at, in the not too distant future. Have we decided exactly what CTE we're going to have there yet? Uh, we're right now. We're very general. Okay. We've got some big programs planned, okay. some automotive technology, some right. engineering that, design. That's what I figured. Yeah. Uh, but as we go through the whole overhaul of that campus and mm -hmm. look at the the, pro the programs that are there versus what are here in Conroe and what South County needs and right. the, the different communities uh, will support. Uh, so but we're working with our CTE department and our, all of our CNI departments in that planning process uh, to make sure we get the right programs in that location. Okay, thank you. All right, we have a motion second. Uh, all in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Item um, C, select job order contracting as the procurement method uh, for 2020 summer Kitchen renovation project, select GTT, uh, Dr. No. Mm -hmm. Foster. This is a little bit different, so it's a construction project. Uh, if you'll recall, about this time a year ago and the two years prior to that, we did, brought a very similar item. Uh, the item is two things, really. One is to select the contracting method, which is job order contracting, of which GTT is a, 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 an awarded vendor within that job order contracting procurement uh, method. So GTT has been uh, successful in 2017, 18, and 19 for this very uh, scope of work, working with our child nutrition department and some of their their capital upgrades that they do. Uh, and the the job order contracting method is selected because it's it's quick and efficient, and this project is under a million dollars, so it doesn't doesn't carry quite the same complexity as a uh, CME risk for a campus overhaul, so to speak. So at this time, we're we're requesting your approval one for the uh, use of job order contracting in two of the summer 2020 kitchen renovation project, which totals $897,150 and will address kitchen upgrades at David Elementary, Gladys Elementary, Connor High School, ninth grade campus, the Woodlands High School, ninth grade campus, and the Woodlands College Park High School. All right. Um, I move for approval. A motion. Second. A motion. Second. All right. And discussion? I just have a comment. I, I'm Second. glad that we're doing the job order contracting because this is a job we've done before and we've got a contractor that's done it before with us right yes, so sir. really saving a little money is my understanding from not using the cr the construction manager at risk option is that correct well i mean it, it it's it's a that's cost associated with work is fully trackable and, right. and the, there's a very large audit trail for that right uh, but we are saving because we're not having to advertise for another selection. We're not having to advertise for another bids because right. that was all done when we 
when they competed to be a part of that job order contract. So this is a little more cost efficient is what I'm getting at. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. All in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Consider approval, um, selection. Consider and approve selection of suppliers for campus renovations 2020. Long lead equipment uh, package, Dr. No. All right, Mr. Foster. At this time, I want to bring forward for your consideration and approval of selection of suppliers for equipment specifically for our Campus Renovations 2020 package. And this is really a, a timing exercise. It's not a normal board item for us. Uh, however, when the bond election came in November, mm -hmm. it really put a crunch on our schedule for our summer 2020 mm -hmm. projects. We would normally bring you a Campus Renovation project in November, December timeframe. So we can order the equipment, make use of spring break, and then move on into the summer work. So at this time, we're ordering the equipment now uh, as Conroe ISD. So this is chillers, pumps, air handlers, air terminal units, fan cap powered boxes, things of that nature that take a long time to procure. In the next month or so, we'll bring you the actual GMP for the campus renovations project that these, this equipment's going for. So the, we're asking for the approval to purchase about $400,000 worth of equipment. We will assign this contract to the general contractor and it will be a part of their GMP that we'll bring at a, at a future date. But this time we're ordering that we're obligating Conroe ISD to the equipment so that we'll be here in time to do the work this summer. So moved. Thank you. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you, Mr. Foster. Are right, you up there? Receive capital improvement updates, Mr. Foster. All right, so this is the month where our capital improvement updates start to get a little bit longer than they have over the last couple of months. Not much longer, though. We'll be, we'll be quick tonight. We're going to start you with Stockton Junior High School, which is scheduled to open in August this coming summer. So when the students return from the summer break in August, they will begin classes at Stockton Junior High. So the project's a little over 80% complete at this point. It is on schedule. So you can see from our red picture, the, the site around the building is starting to clean up, so they're beginning the process of working on the outside as well as the inside. So on the inside of the building, you can see color, you can see life, you can see the light fixtures, you can see the finishes going in. Uh, the floor tiles in the athletics area are, are beginning to be installed. So they're in the, in the side corridors now before they make their way uh, towards the commons. This is a picture from the uh, far end of the athletics corridor looking into the, what will be the dining commons in the future. And then in our classrooms, uh, you're looking at a stockpile of carpet. So they're beginning to bring those things into the, the building. So we've been installing casework over the last month or two. And then over the next uh, several weeks, they'll begin laying carpet in the classrooms and we'll really see that building become more and more of a finished project uh, as, as each board meeting passes. And then get to moving on to Flex School number 20, which we broke ground on after you, our board, approved it at the last board meeting. So from this overhead picture, before we started, so this is about two weeks old-ish, so right before spring break, a nice picture of a pristine site that we purchased uh, from the developer in the Granger Pines neighborhood, uh, down 3083 from uh, Milam and Patterson. And then following uh, over the course of spring break, uh, they completed the building pad construction. So. Uh, you're looking from the job trailer across the, the, the completed building pad. So they're out there putting the finishing touches on it, stabilizing uh, some of that earthwork around the building pad so that rain becomes less and less of a problem for us over the next few weeks. Now, this project is scheduled to open in August of 2021, and I'm happy to report it is on schedule. <laughs> and that is all right. <laughs> okay. Outstanding job, Mr. Foster. Appreciate it. Always good. All right. Item six, business finance. Consider award of CSP number 20-01-08. Dr. Nall. All right, Mr. Rick Reeves. Reeves. <clears throat> Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Nall. Tonight we are recommending that the board consider awarding CSP number 20-01-08, maintenance, repair, and operations, job order contract program for technology services to the following vendors for an estimated annual expenditure of $250,000. Competitive seal proposals pertaining to the district's maintenance, repair, and operations job order contract program, program for technology services was released in conjunction with the Gordian Group. The bid proposal was emailed to register vendors through the district's electronic e-bidding system and also advertised two times in the courier. Vendors were asked to bid their adjustment factors based on the Gordian Group MRO task catalog for various technology services categories, including structured cabling, audio visual installation, voice and data communication systems, 
and electronic safety and security installation, to name a few. All unit prices are based on local label material and equipment prices and are for the direct cost of construction. Adjustment factor pricing will remain firm through March 30th, 31st, 2021, renewing annually with four optional one-year terms through March 31st, 2025. The proposals were evaluated by the technology department and reviewed by the purchasing department. Best value offers are recommended for award. Funds are provided in the general fund. At this time, I recommend your approval. So moved. Second. I want a motion second and discussion. All, all in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Appreciate you. That's done. Man. All right. Consider approval of 2020-2021 uh, teacher hiring schedule. All right. Mr. Rice. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. It is my pleasure to recommend the Board of Trustees approve the 2020-2021 teacher hiring schedule. We believe that it is beneficial to approve the teacher hiring schedule early in the budgeting process as this will improve employee recruitment and retention. The attached proposal was recommended by the TASB Compensation Group. It includes a 3% general pay increase on the midpoint for all teachers, librarians, nurses, and counselors. We believe that this proposal will keep CISD competitive with peer school districts in the Houston area. Under this plan, the starting teacher salary will be $57,000. Existing teachers will receive a salary increase of $1,800. Teachers with two to, five, two to 15 years of experience will receive an additional targeted adjustments ranging anywhere from $150 to $900. And this will ensure competitive salaries throughout those years of experience. Total teacher salaries will increase by approximately $7.7 .7 million, and this is part of the plan of the budget that y'all saw uh, at the February um, budget workshop. So at this time, I recommend your approval. So moved. So motion second. Um, before we get to this discussion, who second? I'll second. Raise, raise second. Mr. All right, I'll, I can see the chart. Mr. Rice, who does this not include, I guess is a better question as opposed to asking who does it include? Yeah, the, we will bring uh, later on in the budget process the approval for all administration for uh, our auxiliary <coughs> departments will we'll come later on in the budget process. That will be your custodians, cafeteria workers, administrative staff here, principals. And it, 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 I think what he's saying is why aren't they being approved tonight and because we got to get out ahead of yeah, well, teacher hiring deal. Yeah, you know, yeah this, this, this. If I could, yeah. T typically, we um, we wouldn't yeah, we do, it all do raises until later. We do the, we bring the teacher raise early because of the recruitment schedule. Um, we would we had planned to have a job fair next month. Uh, yeah, but. It, that's been changed now. But we we typically try to approve the teacher salary schedule <laughs> before the job fair, and then we will bring forth to you all other positions. This is just teachers, counselors, and nurses now. We're bringing forth but everybody. My question else. more so helps me understand what's our expectation for that next one in order for me to be better informed about this one. The, the, the current raise that right now that the budget is looking like is is a is a three percent for all other employees, and a okay. three and a half percent for our auxiliary employees. Okay, that helps me with this one. Yeah, understood. All right. I understand. I, understand. I have a question, and it, it has a we we approve this because. You know, we got the job fair coming, and, and we've got to get out there ahead of it. And we made that change, I don't know, so many moons ago, I don't know, about 15 years ago, right? Or whatever. All right. But what I'm saying is, with the job fair changing and so many unknowns, uh, are you going to be hiring uh, teachers. Uh, teachers specifically? Are you going to be hiring teachers on a one off basis? until you can meet with larger groups if, and is this uh, I'm all for the rate mm -hmm. but do we need to uh, uh, prove it I mean where are we going with this as far as yeah. not having the job fair you understand it, what I'm understood. Saying? Yes, sir. it's a timing thing not, <laughs> yes. a, not whether we should give them a rate or not understood. Okay? I mean just clarify so the job fair being canceled certainly affects the way that we recruit and retain teachers because we don't have that single day event but it doesn't change the calendar it actually might make it more important today because um, our current teachers will be making decisions if, if they may want to seek employment elsewhere. We, we're actually going to probably need to move faster in hiring teachers for next year because we're going to have, we're going to be forced to do it 
like you said, a little more one off. We won't have this one big day push. So, um, I, I'm, I might make the argument that this year more than ever, this is important yeah. um, to do it now versus later. I was going to add that very same thing when you've got all these pre-K teachers that we've got to hire Correct. to get ready for pre-K next year, plus just the normal attrition well, of folks. And mm -hmm. what I think it's Stockton? critical that we're yes, sure. a bunch of them. Anyway. Yes, I'm sir. with it. I, I, just, my, cause I guess my question is, why don't we just, if you expect that the next group be 3%, why don't we just all knock it all out tonight? What's the point of It's just something historically that we've never done. We've always sort of held that card a little closer just to make sure there's no change in the budget process moving further. Right now, we, we still feel very secure that what we presented to you a few months ago will be what we have. But um, that allows us, you know, certainly teachers make up the largest piece of our uh, employees. So we can, by moving on this, we still leave ourselves a, a little bit of room, but based on your feedback from last time, we made an adjustment for those other employees up to the 3% that Mr. Rice mentioned based on your feedback. Okay. Any other discussion, gentlemen? All in motion, I've got motion, second, all in favor? Thank you, Doc. Mr. Rice, I appreciate you. We, we do have executive session. Well, we got to do some we financial reports. Financial reports. Financial okay, reports. yes. Man, and put all that PowerPoint effort in there. <laughs> Dollar signs coming up. <laughs> let's, let's do that. All right, Mrs. Garza. All right, item C, receive financial reports. Yeah. <laughs> you get excited about financial reports. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. It is my pleasure this evening to present the financial statements for the month ended February 29, 2020. First statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet. The balance sheet shows the district's assets, liabilities, and fund balance. Taking a look at our um, cash and investments in the general fund, um, cash on hand of $500, our bank deposits of $631,000. Investments in the state pool of $257.9 million, our shorter term investments $14.8 million, our investments with Wood Forest National Bank $76.1, and our longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors $51.8 million, for total cash and investments in the general fund of $401.4 million. Tax collection progress, we are currently at 96.03% of collections at our total levy of $468.5 million. Currently trending a little bit ahead of where we were last year at this time. We are at 95.88, so tax collections are coming in nicely. Our next statement is the income statement. The income statement shows the district's revenues and expenditures. Our revenues come from local sources, state, and federal. Looking at our expenditures by major object and general fund, of course, payroll is our largest expenditure. You can see in debt service, our February debt payment has been reflected here, $74.8 in expenditures. In child nutrition, our largest expenditure is for supplies and in self-funded insurance claims processing. Taking a closer look at our local revenue, of course in the general fund and debt service fund, our largest generators is tax revenue. In child nutrition, food sales of $5.8 million and in self-funded insurance, premium contributions of $25.3 million. Self-funded insurance, another rough month for the plan in February, 4.1 million in revenue, 4.5 million in expenditures for a total net loss of 435,000 for the month. Our year-to-date net loss is at $354,000. Participation at the wellness centers is averaging 580 year-to-date. Hello, is that year-to-date? What was the year-to-date loss? Three hundred fifty-four thousand. Three hundred fifty-four thousand. You're not doing a calendar year, are you? Are you doing a calendar year? No, this is fiscal this, year. Oh, this, this is, is only six months. Well, why? Was, okay, I got gotcha. you. So, are we still anticipating needing to make an adjustment? Uh -huh. I, I believe so. Yeah. I, I think in the fund, the fund itself, the self-funded fund, has uh, the appropriate amount of fund balance to, to really handle any any okay. that might incur. So that fund does have an appropriate fund balance in it. Um, so what we'll, what we'll see is as we go through the rate setting and, and you know, premiums and looking at the actual plan itself, we'll have to make We'll make adjustments there. then? Yes. Okay. All right. Can we Very see good. a phone balance? The, in the insurance? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Like Clubhouse, a little over $3 million. Okay. Income. Yeah. And that, that is taking into account any runoff also. Right. Gotcha. So after okay. runoff, you still have about $3.3 million. Thank you. Could you go back one slide? Sure. Um, the food sales generating revenue under child nutrition, with us being shut down for the next few weeks, do we anticipate that's going to require any major budget movement of money to cover any kind of shortfall for child nutrition? So, TA has indicated to us that, that they will be fully funding the meal distribution that we're doing. So, um, we may not have the revenue of at all. Like Darren speak, we won't have the revenue of sales necessarily, but we should not see um, a negative. Yeah, we, we won't have we, food we orders either. We'll we correct. Yes. On, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, but we just won't. See, yeah. Right. We won't, we won't see that profit built, but exactly. we'll, we'll be reimbursed for the okay. cost. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Our investments as of February 29th. Um, the slide's going to look a little different in a few months, as we all yeah. know. Um, <laughs> yeah, our pools are yielding 1.764 currently, um, Wood Forest National Bank at 1.75. Our short term investments are yielding 1.811 with a WAM of 177 days. Our longer term investments with TCG are at 2%. And our com combined portfolio is at 1.781 with a WAM of 37. Um, and our 90 day T bill is our benchmark 1.273. Okay. Thank you. It won't be surprising if we see that number drop at least 50 to 75 basis points between now and next month. TCG will be our, our best yeah. because of the longer term. And we have taken steps in the last couple of days to um, purchase some additional short-term investments to lock in some yield, at least over the next several months. So. Good. Very good. Good. Right. Very good. Thank you. That was a smart move. Outstanding. Thank you. All right. Closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in notice for this meeting as authorized by Section 551071, 551072, 551074, and 551 uh, eight two of Texas Bill Meeting Act. Uh, should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive me meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be had at either a the public meeting upon reconvening of the public meeting, or b at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof, as the board shall determine. A closed meeting of the board will now be held. The time is 7.12 p.m. We're back in session. Uh, legal, item 10, consider approval of contracts to sell property to the city of Conroe. Thank you. Do you have a motion? So, so moved. Second. Is it read? read, read yeah, is it read? Is it read? That one's just a motion, right? Yeah, it's just a motion. Okay. To so we got, a, we got a first from uh, Mr. Uh, a motion there. A second. Second, okay. All right, all in favor? All right, good deal. Consider a recommendation of the superintendent to propose non-renewal of term contract employee Linda uh, Padoop. Padu Padu President, I move the board approve the superintendent's recommendation to propose the non-renewal of Linda Padano's term employment contract for the reason stated in board policy DFBB local, that if the hearing, if any, be conducted by the board of trustees and that the board authorize the superintendent to provide notice of these actions to Ms. Padano. Second. We have a motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate that. Item C, terminate pro probationary employment contract of um, Sarah Essen Essener. Mr. President, I move that the probationary contract of Sarah Esner be terminated at the end of the contract term in the best interest of the district and authorize the superintendent to provide notice to the teacher. Okay, we have a motion. Second. I have a second. Mr. Moore, all in favor? Motion passes. Adjourn. Thank you.